Hi, I'm Dan Clement with Stalls. In this video, I'm going to share with you some uh, basic artwork techniques and tips that will allow you to create better art for any kind of decorating techniques. But especially if you outsource your artwork for, say, transfers like Ultra Color Max from Stalls and Transfer Express. There's a lot I'm going to want to cover here, so uh, let's get right to it. Let's talk about artwork and the types of artwork that we need to concern ourselves with. So for our industry, we need to know vector artwork and we need to know raster artwork. Now, most people realize what a vector artwork file is uh, if they've ever done any kind of vinyl cutting, right? From a Cricut to a Roland, whatever. If you've cut vinyl, you've used vector files because it has to have a vector outline in order to know where that knife blade goes. Um, a raster file, most people don't realize what it is. But all it is is a continuous tone file, right? So if you ever take a selfie and took a picture, right? That picture is a raster file. That is a continuous tone pixel-based image, right? So let's talk about the differences. So if, right here, if I go to my view and I view my outlines, this top image, although they look the same, right? There you go. So the top one is vector file. You see it has nodes. A vector file is created with those two nodes, or not two nodes, thousands of nodes, or millions, right? It's a node here and a node here, and it's connected with a line. It could be a straight line, it could be a curved line, it just, in between two nodes is a trajectory, some sort of line that's connecting it, right? So if you take a look, it looks the same, but the one at the bottom has just a big square and an X in it. And anytime you see something like this, that just shows you immediately that it is an image file. It could be a JPEG, could be a PNG. This one is just a So if your customer gives you a file that looks like a vector file, it may or may not be. So that's one way to check it. One other thing that we can talk about here before we kind of get rolling on the vector stuff is, um, is generalities, right? Like, so if you're going to use these, this artwork for DTF, for instance, you don't want to use soft edges. You don't want to use any fades, any transparent pixels um, in the artwork. You can have transparent pixels on the outside edge, but um, you want to make sure that you stay 100% uh, coverage, right? No, no drop shadows, no soft edges, that sort of thing. Um, another thing is, is profiles. Let's talk about color settings, right? So your color profiles that you want to use, if you want to match what you see on screen to the closest possibility, you want to make sure your working space is sRGB. Uh, that's going to, whatever you create on screen, it's going to get you your closest and won't be perfect because it never is, but it will get you as close to that as possible. Um, and you can, you know, get hit and hit OK to that. Also, if you want to make sure you set it, if you go to the edit menu and assign that profile, you can make sure that my working space, I click on it, it makes my working space that profile, and I hit OK. So now anything I create in my file, we're good to go with that. Happy Friday. Uh, it's not really Friday as I record this, but I like Fridays, and I figure you might like Fridays too, right? So here we go. I just typed out some nice little fun font, right? So I'm going to click my type tool, and I'm going to, just to show you that it's live type. So I double clicked in it, selected all my type. Um, it's live type. First thing you want to always do, especially when you're working with someone else, if you're going to outsource anything, is convert your live type to create outline. So I'm going to go to type here, and I'm going to come down to create outlines. Right, so now I don't have to worry about my fonts not matching up with their fonts or having any font issues because a lot of times most problems come in the font areas, right? So this avoids it completely because now it's just artwork. But I want to show you this. If I zoom in, um, you see this? This is a cross cut, right? So let's preview this again as the outline. This shows you that this letter is overlapping the next and overlapping the next and overlapping the next. Now, if I'm going to just do this as a um, DTF transfer, send it out, have them made, no problemo. I'm good to go. I can send it. But I don't like to do it that way. If I, have, if I create type outlines, I'm going to go ahead and open up my properties panel, which I keep open quite a bit because I use it a lot. Um, see right here it says Pathfinder. Anytime you want to find a panel in Illustrator, it's in the Windows menu, right? So if yours is not showing, just go to the Windows menu to pull it up. Uh, but what I want to do is I want to hit this Pathfinder here and come down to Unite. 
Uh, it's called Weld and Corel Draw, something else in Affinity for, uh, Designer. So it's just a vector way of turning this now into one clean piece of artwork, right? So that means this file here is ready to go for vinyl cutting, but I can also send it out to have my transfers made. Another thing I want to talk about is soft edges, right? We mentioned soft edges before, but if I select this thing, let's say I want to do something cool like uh, add a drop shadow, right? You don't want to do this with DTF because the transparent pixels in there, those soft faded edges do not transfer well. If it looks okay when it's made, it probably won't wash well and it's probably going to be kicked back to you and tell you to take it off. So just try to avoid those kinds of things uh, when you're creating your artwork. Um, another thing would be this would be, let's say, let's say I want to print this as gray and not black, right? So in my properties panel, if I go to my opacity slider and I slide it down, let's say 40% because I want to print a gray, you don't want to do it that way, right? Don't make your, um, your color a percentage of another color. So I'm going to go ahead and make this 100%. This time, though, if I wanted to do the gray still at 40%, I would come in here and I would click a 40% gray. So I still have that gray look that I'm looking for. But when I select this and I look at my properties, it is 100% coverage because transparent pixels don't work well and it will get kicked back to you um, if you try to upload that. So those are two different things. You know, transparency things is to avoid. All right, All right, so, so let's do this one. This is a piece of clip art. What I want to do is take a look, see what I'm dealing with. I'm going to file menu, I mean a view menu, outline, and I can see my big square because all it is is a PNG placed into my file. So what I want to do though is I want to live trace it or trace it, right? So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to select it, and let's just go ahead and hit the image trace button. And it says, hey, I get this menu. Um, I only leave it up there to show you. It's just going to tell me it's going to take a long time to do. I'm going to hit OK. It's only going to take a second. And now it's done, right? So now let's go ahead and preview this. Go to my outlines here again. And you see it still looks like an image because we're not done yet. When you trace something in Illustrator, you have to hit the Expand button. You can find that Expand button here at the top or in your Properties panel here at the bottom, right? So I'm just going to hit Expand. And then now if you notice inside my image, you'll see those blue lines. So now let's take a preview and we have our outlines. That's our vector outlines. Now, one thing we want to worry about here is if I select this thing, you see I have a line here now. And if I preview that, it's going to keep that as part of my file. I don't want that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ungroup this. I can, again, if my property panel, uh, properties panel is up, I can hit ungroup there, or I can go to object and ungroup it here. Um, so with that un undone or ungrouped, I'm going to select just this corner piece. I'm going to delete it. And then now I have just my artwork file. Let's go ahead and preview that again. There's my clip art piece. It's just, just this guy by himself, right? He's ready to go. So, um, that's how you live trace things. If you trace something or image trace in illustrator, live traces, corral draw, you know, I get them all confused sometimes. Uh, but if you trace it, just remember to expand it and make it just that artwork. Otherwise, it still sees it as an image file with that X in it. First thing we need to do when we create our raster artwork, if we're starting from scratch, which a lot of times you will be, we got to set up our file correctly. So let's do that. I'll show you. Go to File, New. And inside this dialog box, it's really simple. As long as you answer or plug in the correct info on the right-hand side of this panel, you're good to go. Now, with us at Great Dane Graphics, I've always created my artwork at 14 inches by 14 inches, right? At 300 pixels uh, resolution. This 300, 300 pixels per inch, that is a high-resolution file. Now, if I'm going to do DTF stuff, I'm probably not going to go to 14 inches. So I might make this, I don't know, 11 inches by 11 inches. Something like that, because I don't want it too big, because I don't want it. I don't want to feel it on the shirt. So the smaller uh, you, and the more open your artwork is, the better off it'll be, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and do something like that. Um, now color mode, I create an RGB all the time uh, because it's a bigger color space, and I know it's not the same that we're gonna gonna be printed to a CMYK printer. But what it will do is if you, when you upload an RGB PNG file. Typically, any service that you use or even your printer that you may have uh, printing it to directly will take that RGB information and convert it to the proper colors, right? So um, 
I keep it everything in RGB. Now, background contents, I'm going to always create my artwork with a transparent background. I want to make sure that I have transparent pixels on the outer edges, not my artwork. Remember, no soft edges, no transparent pixels in DTF work um, to have good quality results. So I'm going to keep it as transparent. In my working space, I can keep it at uh, this sRGB or use something else if you like. Like I said, I usually use Adobe RGB, but if I'm going to do this, I know that they'll be really close to hitting the colors I want because this is the screen resolution or the screen um, color profile, basically. So when I hit create, I get this window. Anytime you see these transparent gray and white checkers, that is transparent pixels, which are great for the background, not for the artwork. So that's how you set up your file. Once that's set up, you're good to go to create anything you want. Now let's see what we can do with some artwork. We have some artwork opened up here in Photoshop. The first thing we're gonna talk about, a couple of different ways, I'll show you how to handle soft edges. Remember, we can't print soft edges on this uh, DTF stuff. So take a look at this image. It's pretty fun, right? It's full color. Man, that's the beauty behind DTF. Full color, killer, any kind of artwork you want. You just need to manage the edges, right? So take a look. So if I, here's all my layers. And I'm going to turn this bottom layer on. I'm going to turn all these off. That's my original artwork. That's what we started with. So we have that cool image. And then we see it's all soft and faded. Can't use it. So we, in order to, to use it, we put it inside of this shape, right? So just grab a... A shape, no matter what the design that you're, is that you're working on, as long as you have a shape that kind of works for it, this is one way to do it. So I'm just going to turn all this other stuff on, and there's my image. Now, I don't know if you noticed this, but if you, if you take a look, my artwork is, inside this layer here, is pasted or clipped inside that shape. Watch. See that? And look, his hand's on a whole other layer here, right? So with this image being inside that shape watch i can break it it's a clipping mask super easy in photoshop so i'm gonna if you notice my cursor changes i'm holding the option or the alt key on your pc click on it and it takes it out right so we can't use that again because outside outside all the shapes we have a soft edge right so hold the option key the alt key and you see my cursor changed with a little arrow that's just telling me to it's going to basically take anything else on this layer and paste it inside the layer beneath it. So that's an easy way to get rid of uh, soft faded edges. Now, here's another one. Let's take a look at this. So this particular image, right, can't do it because we got the soft faded edge. So what we have to do, and that's on my original, if I take a look, turn off all the stuff here, that's my original, right? So I have to take that fish out of this thing. So the cool, easy way to do it would be to go to my paths panel. And create a path and you know, if you notice i'm just going to kind of show you that you see the blue line here as i click off of it click back on it just use your pen tool right set it to path here in the upper corner and trace around your image to generate that shape cool thing about photoshop it actually has uh it saves your path right so you can you, you know you, i can name it outline i can name it fish outline if i wanted to and it'll always be there uh, if you're an affinity photo user not so much you got to work around you got to do so uh, i'm going to go ahead and just click off of it and come here i wanted to show you that because if i turn off this original artwork layer here that is my artwork right so now this would make a great uh, dtf transfer because there's no soft faded edges and if you take a look you know how in the world is that fish going through that letter well we just put his head on a different layer some photoshop tricks uh, that I can show you some other videos. All right, so next thing, let's go to this one. This is a front, right? So it's a nine by nine. So the image is probably about, I don't know, eight by eight, maybe seven and a half by eight, seven and a half by seven and a half, something like that. The background color is kind of my shirt color, right? So it's going to go in a purple shirt. And I wanted you to show you, to show you this because a couple of reasons. One is it looks cool. <laughs> Two is the artwork itself is very open, right? So there's going to be a very soft, easy, nice hand to the shirt. This is what the back looks like, right? So same thing. This being the shirt color is the purple. This artwork is all open. Most of that shirt is inside those giant numbers. So I can go big. If you notice, I'm 14 here by 15 or so. Uh, but it's okay because it's not solid numbers. They're opened and just a little bit of color, a little bit of information in there. 
So let's go ahead and go back to this one. So once my artwork is done, I created it, it looks good. You need to export it so you can upload it, the file, because you can't take all these layers and, you know, most people can't handle those. Plus, you don't want to send out that file. You want to send, if you're going to send out to have transfers made, send out uh, PNGs, right? So turn off the background layer, right? So now my shirt color is turned off because I just wanted to show my customer maybe what it looks like on that background. But now um, this image here, if I go to the file menu, I can come down to export and I can uh, quick export as PNG, right? So when I do that, I'll get this. And there's my same exact file. If you look at my layers here, it's only one layer. It's got transparent backgrounds, but all my color is there. Now, this is almost ready to go, but there's one thing you want to do before you send it is you want to trim out all the outside extra transparent pixels. Because if I took it like it is and I uploaded it, let's say to Transfer Express is easy view um, and go through the motions, two things might happen. You might notice that it says you know, 29 inches by 29 inches um, and that sometimes happens. Uh, you just size it down to what you want. That's just a preview thing on the screen anyways. But what you can do is get rid of this stuff really quick and easy because it, it sees that as an image, right? So it wants, you want to clip it down. So if I go to image and come down to trim, I'll get this little dialog box. And this set is set to check here, top, bottom, left, and right as defaults. So that should be automatically checked in if you've never used it before. And I'll go ahead and hit OK. And it trims it down just to the binding of the actual artwork itself. So now I would take this file and upload it to any online designer and I'd be good to go at that point. So that's what I have for the quick tips today. I hope you learned something. Uh, this, just remember this artwork or these tips can be used for any kind of decorating that you, that you do. If you like any of the images that you saw throughout the video and you wanna know how those are made, let us know in the comments and I'm sure we can make another video to show you how to do that.